Hi, Year 12. This lecture is looking at the final research method question that you will get, which is evaluating a method more generally. This is where you can use the full pervert approach. Okay, so just to remind you, these are all the different issues. Um, however, sorry, the box has gone a bit funny there. When focusing uh, your uh, research methods essay, please remember to evaluate the method and the tensions between the practical, ethical and theoretical issues. It's one of the most important things to focus your evaluation on. So, when considering practical issues, uh, remember to consider time. Uh, which methods will take a long time? Um, it's surprising how many sociologists actually don't conduct covert observation, for example, because they simply can't afford to take that much time off paid work, for example. Access is certainly a practical issue. Um, which groups of people do you think might be difficult to contact or difficult to study? Money. Why might certain methods be much more expensive? And this links directly to funding. Um, how might the funding affect both the method and the topic being studied? studied? Um, so if you've got lots of funding, you can probably choose to do a, a research method that involves a, a team of researchers or one that might take a long time for yourself to complete. Uh, when it comes to the topics studied, your topics will be, linked, will be influenced by practical issues. Okay? So things like how you look will influence your research, particularly if you're thinking about covert observation. Um, things like... Um, the, you might want to think about when it comes to funding, the, like I said there, the example of the, the dangers of um, drugs being funded by the companies that make them. And remember, many of the health studies into the damage that cigarette smoking did to you were mainly conducted by the cigarette companies themselves in the 1930s and 40s. Okay. So I just want you to think a bit more about the subject matter or topic. Okay, so you might get the method, uh, a question, for example, that says, um, assess the advantages of UV using unstructured interviews, as we talked about today. Um, you could probably uh, think about some topics that unstructured interviews would be very good for researching. So things that might be quite sensitive, like um, rape, uh, domestic violence, bullying, okay? Um, so certain research methods are better suited to certain topics. So can you uh, annotate on your PowerPoint which methods would be best for studying the following? Finding out what students think about school, finding out about classroom behaviour, analysing gender differences in achievement, analysing the changes in education policies over time, the behaviour of gang members, and finding out whether teachers actually enjoy their work. So ethics, ethical issues. Um, what are ethics? You know, what are your ethics? What do we mean when someone should behave ethically? Okay. Um, to summarise it, ethics are about whether certain things are right or wrong. Um, however, you should think um, one person's right is another person's wrong. And I always think... One person's freedom fighter is another person's terrorist is quite an interesting way of thinking about ethics and the dilemmas you might be placed in as a sociologist. Basically, morals underlie the principles that guide our behaviour. So we all want, might aim to be fair or honest. The ethics are actually how we apply these principles in practice. So you wouldn't shoplift, um, you wouldn't lie to your parents, I'm sure. That would be ethical behaviour. Um, ethical guidelines are provided by the British Sociological Association and the key that their first um, statement is that researchers should aim to safeguard the interests of those involved in or affected by the research. Okay, So that would be the participants and the research team but particularly it might be think worth thinking what people might be affected by the publication of the research, maybe beyond the participants themselves. Could there be any harm to the participants or the participants' family because of the research? Could they lose income or could they lose jobs? Research should ensure that the physical, social and psychological well-being of research participants is not adversely affected. Researchers should recognise the boundaries of their research competence and should not pretend, for example, to be psychologists when they're not. And sorry, this has been cut up by that star. 
Research should be based on freely given informed consent of those studied. Researchers should be aware of the possible consequences of their work. Okay, so might their work lead to arrests, for example? Could it lead to job losses? Um, can it lead to some harm if a researcher suddenly leaves a research environment? Uh, researchers should take a note that for some participants, the experience of sociological research can be positive and welcome, but for others, it can be negative and disturbing. Maybe you might want to think about unstructured interviews and the probing that might go on. Will that make participants feel uncomfortable maybe talking about things like the impact of their parents' income on their education, for example? Uh, researchers should take very special care when researching participants that are particularly vulnerable because of age, social status and powerlessness. Um, this it also includes people who might be homeless, people who are victims of certain crimes. Um, the researchers should make sure that they do not feel obliged to answer or behave in a way because they believe the researcher expects it of them. Anonymity privacy and confidentiality should be honoured at all times. So what I'd like you to think about now, is, um, and annotate on your PowerPoint, is how would William White's street corner society, how would that example of research conflict with so many of these ethical issues? And what do you think he did to ensure the anonymity, privacy and confidentiality of his participants? So, when applying ethical considerations, you might want to think about which method would be you would be more useful if researching seven sensitive issues. Okay, uh, what methods can you use to research things that go on in the privacy of the home, for example? Because you can't go undercover and get into people's homes. So, what methods might be useful for investigating domestic violence, for example? Which method involves an element of deception, as the participants are unaware they're being studied? What happens if the researcher is involved in illegal or immoral activities? What method might involve this? And what do you think researchers should do with their guilty knowledge if they witness a crime, if they witness someone being beaten up or a car being stolen? What should they do with that guilty knowledge? And how does that conflict with the aim of safeguarding the interests of everyone involved in the research? How do you ensure confidentiality? And who would be regarded as vulnerable in the different research scenarios? Okay, I'm going to run through the next issues fairly quickly because we talked about it in quite a lot of detail. Uh, validity. Uh, there may be a difference between what people say and what they do. And there are certain methods that are easier to spot the real truth. This is something known as Verstehen, okay? Developing a true understanding of someone you're studying. Trying to develop a rapport, okay? So what methods would be best for this? And how can the researcher check misunderstandings um, in the different research methods that you know about? Or are there some that you can't check misunderstanding? Is the research or the method altering people's behaviour in any way? Um, what's this called in an observation? Are there cultural power differences, for example, age, gender or class, which is known as the interview or interviewer effect? Do they get the truth from respondents? Uh, do people lie? Might people forget? Or might they present a more positive image of themselves, possibly in diaries, like social desirability effect? You should be using examples of research, okay, that have used the method you're discussing. Okay. When, when considering if a method is reliable, um, generally they can be considered broadly reliable if the same results can be gained by different researchers asking the same sorts of questions to the same or broadly similar people. The key thing to ask, are standardised procedures used? So, for example, the same questions. When is uh, this an advantage and when is this a disadvantage? And can comparisons be made with previous and sub um, subsequent research? Representativeness. Uh, the key question here is, can you generalise the findings? Okay, Is your sample broad enough for you to say that this is a rule that you could roll out to the whole country, the whole world? Or are you being too localised or even Eurocentric if you just focus on Europe? Um, do you want to have a large sample? Can you, can you have a large sample in a particular topic that you're researching? And will there be a high response rate and which method has the lowest response rate? So, theoretical issues. These are really important. Um, this is linked to the type of data required. Some sociologists may want to explore the meanings people give to their behaviour and are likely to collect qualitative data. 
These are called interpretivists. Sociologists who want to establish, establish a causal or a cause and effect relationship between two variables like class and exam, class and exam performance will collect quantitative data. This is known as the positivist approach. Can you please annotate what methods will collect quantitative data generally and which method will, methods will collect qualitative data generally? Essentially, positivists believe that methods, um, so, sorry, social research should follow the same methods as the natural sciences. So what methods are really close to the natural sciences? Think about the Rosenthal and Jacobson Pygmalion in the classroom. Can sociologists study people in the same way as rocks? If not, why not? And in the interpretive approach argue that in order to understand people's behaviour, we need to see things from their point of view and understand their interpretation of what they see and do. Now, this would be really useful for understanding things like the formation of anti-school subcultures or why is it that some people truant and why is it that teachers t treat some students differently to others? Um, and what are the problems with seeing things through the eyes of people that you are studying? Okay. So um, thank you for that year 12 um, and I'll see you in lesson.